All right, let's get Nitro forth. Some people really violently, viciously hated this show. I thought it was just... I can't tell if my spirit's just broken. Uh, my my standards are so low that that this show was... I, I, certainly, I'm not going to say good, but I had no visceral, primal, guttural reaction. I didn't either. I was and I mean, maybe I will by the time I get done reviewing it, yeah. but I think part of it was... Like, they had a couple segments, like the one early with Russo, where I just honestly didn't know what was going on. I was completely, totally baffled. Which is an improvement over most Russo segments. But then it was over, and I didn't care enough to go back and try and figure out what was going on, so I yeah. just figured you'd tell me, well, and I moved on with my life. I and will see what I can do. That was that. Now, it was stupid that they randomly are having a triple cage war games match on Nitro with no build. Yeah. I mean, that's dumb. It's incredibly dumb. This is one of the reasons they died this year. That's really... In the next year, I guess. Really fucking dumb. Within the year. Yeah. So, yes. There, the show opens with a hype video for a triple cage match pitting Vince Russo, Scott Steiner, Kevin Nash, and Jeff Jarrett against The Cat, Sting, Booker T, and Goldberg. Think, That's weird. They're in a triple cage match with no build on Nitro. And then it's announced... The world title is on the line. Mm -hmm. Then I thought, wait, so Booker T has to defend his title against seven dudes? Hold that thought. Also, just in case you were thinking of turning the channel, the match is called Russo's Revenge. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to stay tuned. And they also referred to it as War Games, where, well, to be to be nitpicky, War Games is always held in a double ring, double yes. cage. No, that's not nitpicky, Craig. That is accurate. Okay. This is not a War Games match, no matter how many times they say Okay. It. Fair enough. Insane Clown Posse versus the Filthy Animals for the World Tag Team title. Well, first, Jeremy Borash is out there doing commentary. I guess oh, Scott gosh. Hudson's wife gave birth, which literally could happen to me at any time during any of these shows, so be ready. Hope it's on a TV. He has shaved his head, and this was back when I thought he looked like Dr. Bunsen Honeydew from The Muppets. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. All they right. They explained that he had lost a bet with Vince Russo about the rating of the first segment of Nitro. I can only imagine what this bet was. I'm going to have to find out. But he shaved his head. He lost. Russo won. I'm, I'm guessing he probably thought that that wouldn't be get... His head shaving wouldn't be on TV. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, what could you possibly have bet Russo and lost? And I can't even imagine. But he got his head shaved. So, Borash is on commentary, as is Conan, because it's a Filthy Animals match. And Borash says, and I will do my best to get his tone and inflection in there. Mm -hmm. Conan, you always say you've got it like that. Do ICP have it like that? I laughed. Mm -hmm. So, Conan, he, like, he's funny, <laughs> but he's absolutely burying the show. Oh, my God, he's yes. burying ICP. He's entertaining himself. ICP, he says, prove you don't need talent to make it in this business anymore. As they're competing for the World Tag Team titles and that very moment. I was just appalled because I like Conan and all. But, dude, was Conan any better than Violent J at this point in the ring? Doubtful. <laughs> it's a toss-up. And Violent J and had frankly, been, on the mic either. <laughs> Violent J had been working, well, different ways. I mean... You know, Violent J way more successful in his rap career than Conan, I, I, for I mean, example. Uh, I will sure. clarify. As a wrestling commentator, Violent J was better. Oh, he was very good. Yeah. There was Conan a, was very good in a different way, but he had to bury things. Yes. Like, Conan, Conan was Conan. burying ICP, and about that time, Guerrero jumps off the top rope for a crossbody, and Shaggy Tudo, with the best timing I've ever seen... That's actually true. ...hit a drop kick out of midair and didn't kill him. That spot looks like crap... 95% yes, of the time. And he pulled it off. <laughs> it was Shaggy. What are the clowns? Shaggy Tudo. The clown. The worst clown for that yeah, matter. Yeah, the lesser clown. The, the worst time was clowns. perfect. It's a strong kick perfect. Listen, Violent J was not like a great worker, but he was totally fine. He never messed anything up. He did everything he needed to do. He was where he needed to be, mm -hmm. and he was fine. Yeah. Yes. Don't bury Violent J. Why don't I bury Violent J? You didn't! Conan did! Are you paying attention? Got it. I thought you were mad at me. I assume you're mad at me. Well, he's, he probably... So, Why would you ever assume that? I don't know. So the animals make their comeback and win with a ball shot. Yeah. Rob I'm always mad at. That's true. That's true. Rob, we have taken my heat. The heat has shifted. Yes. When you were here last week, Rob, we had a civil discussion. Oh? I think you trigger him. No, come on. 
So Team Canada. <laughs> no, Rob. <laughs> we still got all night here. Do you recall last week in the Prisoner of War match, Team Canada kidnapped Major Guns? Yeah. Right. So the gimmick... This is so... this Okay, this show is dumb. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> so Lance and Elix Skipper have kidnapped Major Guns, and their goal is to make her into a Canadian. Right. right. Okay. So in order to do so, they're, it's the early Storm Wrestling Academy. He's got her running... <laughs> the very first student. <laughs> he's got her running on the treadmill backstage. Mm -hmm. She's sweating. And bouncing all around. And he explains... She needs to be reintroduced to hard work and perseverance. I guess at some point in Major Gun's life, she did a lot of hard work and persevered, and it's dropped off since she came to World Championship Wrestling. Well, so Lance is gonna he's gonna work this back into her. So he's making her run on this treadmill, and he says, "Once you're in shape, you'll be a Canadian." Mm -hmm. She says, "I don't want to be a Canadian," but she continues to exercise against her own will. What? Lance is very persuasive. <laughs> that happened. All I know is all Major Guns had to do was get on this treadmill, turn it on, and act like you're running. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't even do that. No. Well, Vinny, the problem was because she had to act like she was running. They put it... If she would have just run, mm -hmm. things would probably have been fine. They put it, but she had act like she was running half a mile an hour. Yeah, and she's trying to take steps and looks. And they have they spraying her with water to look sweaty. I'm sure her poor and back is just all out of shape. Anyway, yeah, Cat, Miss Jones, and Booker T get into a limo. Great, and, and by the way, Miss Jones in a neck brace. Yeah, no I, I don't know. I don't care. Who cares? Okay, okay, okay. Vince Russo comes out for a promo. Please explain this to me. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll start. First of all... Then maybe I can get mad. They lower the triple cage for this, which had to take like 10 minutes. Maybe hey, Rob should explain it to me. So I'd effectively be mad. <laughs> so Vince Russo comes out and gets into the triple cage to cut a promo. Mm -hmm. He's in the middle of the ring. Yes. He is surrounded by not one, not two, but three cages. Well, he's surrounded by one cage. The other two are on top of the first cage. Either way, the cage has a roof on it that he's in. Sure. But he still must have the natural-born thrillers in the aisle to protect him. What's the point of the cage? Right. Well, if someone gets in the cage with him, he's in trouble. I, well, again. So I will say this. This is the least of our worries. Sure. Tell me about this stupid segment. Vince Russo is out there in a New Jersey Devil's jersey, which he did take the time to personalize with his own name. So full credit for that one. He explains the rules of the triple dome cage match. You have to start at the bottom, climb up to the top, get the belt, which as we later learn, it's not even in the top cage. It's on top. It's hanging above the top of the cage. It's on top it's a, of the This top. is a giant ladder with three rungs. Yes. Fair. You have to drive, up, drive, dive, climb, dive, climb up there and get it. I don't you could dive know. off of it. I wouldn't. Then you have to climb back down and go out the door to leave. Yes. Okay. To win. To, to win. So basically, if I get the belt, but you get it from me and go out the door, you win. Right. That's exactly what happened, as it turns out. Damn. What if you took the belt and threw it off the cage? Uh, that's what I thought. Would, that's what I would have done. It has to go through the door. You got to bring it back in, then bring it back out. There you go. I yeah. see. So Russo is listing the teams for this match. As the head writer on the show mm -hmm. is explaining what the teams are, mm -hmm. the announcers on the show are talking over him to explain there are no teams, it's every man for himself. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that. Then, Vince Russo, who has been in a power struggle with a cat for weeks, just declares out of nowhere, he talked to Bischoff, the cat has zero power now. Well, this week. Probably this week. I don't even know. I'm sure it'll change sure. by thunder, probably. Russo announces that the Booker T team, who he calls the Heels, Gosh. must compete in qualifying matches before they can get into war games. It's not that he just called them the Heels. He said, in air quotes, the bad guys. Yeah. He's a doofus. He, he at least takes the time to waive the no contact clause between himself and Goldberg. Okay. So they, they, they there's a little bit of continuity, a thread of continuity he's grabbed onto here. He guarantees that before this night is over, he will leave as the world champion. 
This brings out Kevin Nash, mm-hmm. who goes off about how he is not a fighting champion and will not defend his title every night. Nash's new he's gimmick mad. is that he's lazy. Yeah. That's not a new I am a lazy man. I forgot he was world champion. That's right. Until here. Well, I did oh. as well. <laughs> Everyone anyway, did. You thought the point it was is, didn't you? Yes. He I said that earlier. I am a lazy man. Yes. I am not a fighting champion. Yes. I defend my title. I have to defend it once every 30 days. So on day 29, I will wrestle. I might. But wrestle. I will not wrestle every week. Mm-hmm. Russo says, I'm the boss. Oh, it's every fucking Vince Russo segment. You got to do what I say. So Nash grabs him. Thank God the thrillers are there to protect Russo. Mm-hmm. Now Sting comes up through the ring. At this point, I just laughed. I I, I can't. He came through the ring. Yeah, I don't even paying attention. He was, he was coming he, up. I heard his music, room. and then he was in the ring, and then a bunch of dudes run in. What in the hell is going on? I wrote Booker and Shatter there. I thought they left. Apparently, they were coming here. I don't know. Huge brawl. Sting chases Russo to the top. Think about how long this takes. They go Vince to the top. Vince Russo starts in the ring, climbs up one, two, three cages. There's cat and mouse chase up there. Vince Russo climbs down three cages. Now, I could, as a laborer, I thought about this. They had to put this stupid cage together. They had to hang it from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. They had to move the lighting grid out yeah. to, to accompany the cage. And then, during one segment, they had to lower the thing. And then Sting came up through yes. the ring. And they had to raise the cage and redo the, all ring. the, the ring. Yeah. All for this. For, for this. one promo. Yes. I would have yeah. been mad. So Russo is leaving as everyone else brawls. He points at his head. Ha ha, I'm so smart. Goldberg comes out and Russo runs away. So he is smart. Whew. Goldberg couldn't catch Vince Russo. Yeah. Yeah, they had a video where they, where they claimed, and I believe them, that the work crew was there at 4 a.m. that morning building this goddamn were. cage. Of course they were. Because men get up at 4 a.m., that's why. <laughs> oh, I had Men go to bed at 4 a.m. Stupid men. Steiner and Jared are backstage screaming at Russo because everyone must scream at each other on the show. Here is Jeremy Borash, who has, I don't think, ever been on TV on Nitro before getting his head shaved for losing a bet. And we're supposed to carry him. It's the first time he's on camera except earlier today. That's a good head of hair that uh, Borash has. Even today. Okay. I'm just saying. The heresies have footage. They demand to be played. They go to a bar. Chronic is there. They beat them up. And the patrons didn't bat an eye. No. <laughs> Regular occurrence, apparently, in this bar. <laughs> this next thing. Shane Douglas got beat up by Goldberg last week. Mm-hmm. So he goes to Vince Russo. And he says, Goldberg humiliated me last week. I want to be the one who faces Goldberg in a qualifying match tonight. And I want... The natural born thrillers as my partners. So Goldberg's uh, uh, Russo's office is like L shaped. So there's a corner, <laughs> and the natural born thrillers come out as one from behind the corner. <laughs> Tori Wilson says, "No, we don't want you as our partners. We don't need you." And the thrillers all go, and they walk back <laughs> as one, like like fish. So- like a school of fish, they turn as one and walk away. Shane Douglas got destroyed by Goldberg last week, so he wants the thrillers to help. And Tori says, every time they try anything, they screw it up. And I'm like, well, you, your fucking man screwed it up by himself last week. But she's wearing her pants or whatever, and he looks at her and he goes, all right, I'll take this match by myself. <laughs> so now he's he's confident You're not wrong. that he's going to beat Goldberg this week. She was wearing he's pants. also a fighting man as a heel. <laughs> so he leaves. Russo calls the thrillers. The school of natural born thrillers comes back. He orders them to watch Shane Douglas's back. Hell of a job they did. Sting in his qualifying match. It's a handicap match against Great Muda and Vampiro. By the way, did you tell the people that they announced the teams and then they had to qualify to be on the team? Yes. That, that's, that's ridiculous. You don't say. <laughs> that is true. So it's a handicap match. In the corner where Sting came up, there's just a big duct tape X. (laughs) Don't bump here. They don't even bother to announce this now, but these are supposed to be qualifying matches. So technically, if Vampiro and Muda 
win, yes. they get put into the match. Yes. Correct. We don't figure that out until later. Right. They just have this match, and Sting pins Vamp immediately. Muda like, missed Vampiro. Sting was with the death, dro- death this drop. This whole fucking thing we've been watching for months, this thing's like in a minute. And then Vamp, Muda, and ICP all get into a kerfluffle. It's a good word. I can't wait for that storyline to continue. Back at the Canadian gym, Major Guns is on the bench press machine, lifting like half a plate. Definitely a body part she needs to work on. Also, <laughs> chest, yes. That's the whole thing. She still doesn't want to be Canadian. But she's still exercising. Stevie Ray and Russo bitch at each other. Jarrett, Nash, and Steiner talk about Russo. Stevie is screaming at Russo, and first he goes, I don't want to wrestle tonight. Then he goes, well, I came to wrestle, but I don't want to wrestle him tonight. They don't say who him is. And Russo says, you are wrestling him, and this could be your shot at the title. Mm -hmm. So that's when we realize that if one of the, quote, heels loses, the other person ends up in the match. Right. So when Stevie hears, this is my chance at the title, suddenly he's cool with having this match, as we'll get into here in a moment. So, yes, Jarrett and Nash and Steiner, I'll talk about Russo for a minute. Stevie Ray versus Booker T. Here here are my notes in their entire Well, hold on. Stevie comes out and he says, Russo threatened to fire me if I don't do what I'm going to do tonight. I I didn't see that part. I have to face my brother, but I'm not doing it for Russo. I'm doing it for all the fans in the building. And I thought, wait a minute, fucker. When you heard that you had a shot at the title, that's when you decided you wanted to do the match. You were a heel. Now he's out here and he's playing a babyface. So he announces that the man he has to face is Booker T. I can't believe you watched this. This match goes maybe two minutes. It was not good. Stevie goes for the pedigree. Booker fights free. He tries the bookend. He doesn't get it. But he gets it on the second try. And Booker wins. Now the key to this was Stevie jumped Booker from behind. So he's a heel, right? Then he cuts a promo and goes, or Booker yells at him first, what are you doing? After he beats him, Stevie goes, I told you a long time ago, Saka's got to know. You have to have eyes in the back of your head. Now go get ready for war games. So now we're supposed to believe that he's a baby face and he's trying to help his brother out. Everything about this sucked from start to fucking finish. You know when they go, what's my motivation? Sure. Nobody had any idea what their fucking motivation was in this at any point. And so they all just made it up as they went along. God damn. That's an epic match, Vinny. Booker T versus Stevie Ray, brother versus brother. Here is everything I got out of that match. They do a match. Book wins with bookend. You were not paying attention to this intricate storyline. Do you know why, Brian? Because it sucked. It's not important. It's not worth money. This was time. a qualifying match, Vinny. Stevie Ray could have had a shot at that title in a triple cage match. Pay attention. Major Guns has a better chance of being Canadian than Stevie Ray did of beating Booker T. Chronic arrives, beat up the Young Dragons. Here it was. All Asians in wrestling are stupid in the year 2000, including those who are not actually Asian. Then Chronic beats up Free Count 2 because why not? They call it the heresies. Jared comes out instead. Jared, for some reason, is the one to announce that the cat has to face Chronic in a qualifying match. Why is he making these decisions? I don't know. I'm getting mad now. So it's Chronic versus the cat with Jared on commentary. So cat makes the rational, logical point. Look, Adams, Clark, we are all on the same side. We should not be fighting with each other. We should be fighting that guy. And he points at Jarrett. And Chronic says, this man's right. And they turn their back to go beat up Jarrett. And the cat, who is supposed to be a babyface, backstabs Brian Adams, attempts to pin him with a schoolboy, fails, then gets his ass beat, and he is pinned like a geek. Meanwhile, Jeff Jarrett has a guitar and is chasing Miss Jones and her neck brace away. And they cut backstage 
where Vince Russo. This is where I got mad. That's fair. <laughs> Vince Russo is happy and ecstatic that he has gotten the cat out of the match until it dawns on him that the cat's place is now taken by. Both members of Chronic. No, no, so no. where's Vinny? It wasn't that. It's Russo this. is happy, but Steiner. Steiner points it out to him. Yes. Points it out. Thank you, Brian. So Vince Russo hangs his head. No, he, he did the worst. He hadn't thought about something. Yes. He did the worst acting job I've... Ugh. He's a terrible actor. Oh, my gosh. But his, his own storyline... Yes. ...is that he is the dumbest man on the planet. Now, you should have saw this coming, because as we learned a few weeks ago, he's the writer. I'm sure the storyline is that he's actually the most clever guy on the planet, but he's actually the dumbest guy on the planet, legit. So that's how his character turns out on this show. It is mind-boggling. I, I have to work to process how stupid this show is. You know what's funny, though, is this guy is a complete moron, and this company is going down the tubes, and they still can't fuck up Goldberg. That is amazing. True. Goldberg faces Douglas. They do kind of fuck it up because, like, Douglas is getting heat on this guy. Why, why did this match go more than 30 I'm seconds? I'm like, come on. Yep. The Thrillers hit the ring right in front of the ref, which is not a DQ. Goldberg destroys every fucking yes. one of them. Yes. He gives Reno the roll of the dice, which is Reno's finish, but Goldberg does it better than anyone ever has ever because <laughs> it looks like a shoot. Mm -hmm. Kills Palumbo with your finish, Vinny. That's two finishes he's stolen. Did. Then he presses Sanders above his head. Shane Douglas starts walking towards them. So he drops Sanders and spears Douglas at the same time. Yep. Hits the jackhammer. The place is fucking going out of their mind. For like two minutes, WCW is the hottest wrestling promotion on the planet again. Then it's all down the tubes. Goldberg was an incredible phenom. It was a once in a lifetime. Incredible. Yeah. He's not just a big guy that never lost. No, he was a, a fucking incredible phenom. Yeah. There's a lot of guys who don't lose for a long time, and they're not Goldberg. Tatanka didn't lose for years. He wasn't Goldberg. Tatanka, Vinny, was not Goldberg. No. That is a factual statement. Thank you. should write that down, too. So Russo is backstage bemoaning his fate, asking, how do I get into these things? Because you booked the match, you moron. I don't care if that's... Vinny Rue, the wrestling character, or Vince Russo, the Turner employee, you're a moron. Russo goes to apologize to Nash. Nash says, I have agen two agendas. One is to keep my belt. Two is to make sure you don't walk out of that cage. Just beat him up right now, Kevin. He's right there. You're big sexy. Destroy him. What are you waiting for? Well, Vinny, what he's waiting for is the whole fucking show's a swerve. The whole show is a swerve. <laughs> Finally, the best thing on the show. A pool. Major Guns is doing laps in the pool. Major Guns in a swimsuit may have been the best thing on the show. Yet. We didn't see her. She's swimming. Well, that's true. She says, I don't want to be Canadian, but she keeps swimming. Yep. MIA is looking over the MIA wall. is over a fence a thousand yards away, but when they whisper, we can hear it all. <laughs> Pamela Paulshock is interviewing Lance. Lance is forcing her. Lance Storm is forcing someone to swim against their will. Yes. Pamela finally goes, I'm calling security. So Lance throws her into the pool. Yes. I'm sure you can ask Lance about this. I think Lance wanted zero part of throwing of a woman into a pool. Of course not. He like touched her elbow when she jumps in. Yes. Then the MIA runs in. They throw Elix into the pool. They throw Lance, who does a perfect front flip laid out into the pool. It's yes. amazing. And then they brawl in a swimming pool. Yeah. They were all still faster than The Miz. It was incredible. <laughs> I loved this segment. <laughs> at a pool. It was fucking great. Yes. yes, the Misfits in Action beat up Team Canada four on two. And that's the end, by the way. We never find out if Major Guns is Canadian yet. I guess that's next week. Well, she passed her swim test. Their flotation device helped a lot. Vince Russo gives the Natural Born Thrillers a Tim Flower-style pep talk where he tries to fire them up by burying them and pointing out how bad they suck. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> Announces they have a gauntlet match against Vito. <laughs> Pamela Paulshock, who is still wet. Like I said, they, they, there is some continuity in the show. That's an improvement. Mm -hmm. so obviously, that was a pre-tape. That's true. At the, at, you know, I'm seriously. She, she, they had to do some thinking here. They took the time to pour a glass of water on her head. She asks Arn Anderson if Ric Flair will be at David's wedding 
in next yeah next week. And Arn takes a long time to say yes, he will be. Vito comes out for a promo, brags about giving Vince Russo a concussion. The Natural Born Thrillers comes out. Mike Sanders buries Dallas. Vito calls the Thrillers gay. Sanders calls Vito fat. He announces it's a gauntlet match and says, it's all five of us against you. There's six of them standing there. Vito accepts the match. So it is, in fact, Vito against all six Natural Born Thrillers. Takes way too long. All the Thrillers hit their moves and Sanders, who did nothing the whole time, gets the pin. Then they beat up Vito with a stick for a while. Did it ever explain why Reno wrestles in like khaki shorts with a leather diaper over them? What is that? What is that look? I don't know. Was there a video game character at the time? That's a good guess. I don't know. Chronic, Sting, and Booker T pump each other up backstage. Sting was great. Had the place going crazy. Russo, Nash, and Steiner bicker backstage. Pam has the babyface team. She says, one of you will be world champion. Which is wrong then and was wrong now and later. Booker T talks. He is boring. Chronic talks. He is boring. Sting is so awesome. <laughs> In this, the, the, this, this crumbling company. For no good reason. He knows what's going to happen in the main event. He, he does? And I I'm, think he was just happy he got to beat Vampiro and get over with so quick. I could be it. <laughs> Or he just enjoys being Sting. Not nearly as much as the Mountie enjoys being the Mountie. He enjoyed being Sting in the 80s as much as the Mountie enjoyed being the Mountie. That may be true. but he Less he, so in the 90s. He had a ball being Sting in this segment here. He was great. So we have... Okay, so it's War Games, they claim, in the triple cage. And they're explaining the rules are you got to get the bell, climb down, leave the cage to win. At one point... They explain that all of the men have to be in the cage before the match can end. But then, like two minutes later, Tony says, Jarrett Stinger Steiner could win before Nash even gets in the cage. Nobody has any idea what's fucking going on. No. So Jarrett and Sting start, and they wrestle. And then in comes Scott Steiner with his face mask on. Because Goldberg broke his face a few weeks ago. It, that, they remember that later. When he comes out, they're like, what's that face mask he's got on? Because no one knows what's going on. This fucking guy worked his ass off. Yeah, he did. With a broken face. He did. They double team Sting. And then Chronic is in next. Before Chronic comes out, Steiner goes up to the middle cage. And you have to get out the door of the middle cage. Right. But the door is locked for some reason. So he has to get bolt cutters first, then cut the lock, and then open the door. I'm Why? Just, I'm just glad the bolt cutters were up there. Well, they had 17 minutes to do this, man. Why was it locked? I don't know. So Chronic comes out. Hey, at least they're doing the fucking order right this time. I will give them that. And by the way, well, they didn't have baby face advantage the entire match. Well, no, they didn't have. They had baby face. They had heels advantage two on one, but then Chronic came out together, so it was yes. baby face advantage three I on two. I see. By the way, the second cage has plunder in it. There's nightsticks. There's handcuffs attached to the cage. There's uh, it's a hardcore cage. Tony says right. So the handcuffs come into play later. Russo is number. F uh, I should add, Chronic and Steiner are in the middle cage, which is very small, maybe fifteen feet, probably less, and it looks unsecure. No, it, <laughs> and. And these are 300. There's a half ton of men doing spots on this, this mesh. I'd have been terrified. Mm -hmm. I've been absolutely terrified working in this thing. Then they cut to a wide shot, and Sting and Jared are both just doing this. Yeah, looking up. They don't give a shit. No, they're just standing there. So Russo is number five. Hockey outfit, helmet, he comes out and with two heresies. The heresies, who promptly climb up the outside of the cage. Yeah, they just get involved. To go in the middle cage and brawl with Chronic in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Sting starts killing Russo, puts him in a scorpion deathlock for like five minutes, which Russo doesn't even sell once he gets out. So, Nash comes out as number six. Okay, so Nash's gimmick is that he is a lazy man. <laughs> you notice this too. Who wants to defend the title every 29th day, and he does not want to wrestle tonight. Right. So as coincidence would have it, you don't have to climb to the top and get the belt. Mm -hmm. You only have to walk out the door with the belt. 
So this fucking guy comes in, does a couple of spots, and then walks over and stands by the door. Yep. Because yeah. he's just going to wait for whoever gets the belt, and then when they try to go through the door, then he will beat them up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's his plan. Genius. He is actually the smartest man in this company. There's no doubt. Well, now that's his gimmick. Yeah. Right. That Again, Brian, Genius. he's the smartest man in the company. He literally, this is all he did. He gets in the ring, Steiner's in the corner, and he goes to Steiner, and Sting hits a Stinger splash on both of them. That's one physical encounter. Then Sting gets cut off, and Nash chokeslams him. That's two physical encounters. Mm-hmm. I don't think he did anything else the rest of this match. No. no. All he did was threaten to chokeslam people. Yes. He grabs Russo, and Jarrett and Steiner are begging him, no, don't chokeslam him. So he lets go of, of Russo, doesn't have to lift him. He grabs Steiner, and Jarrett says, no, no, don't chokeslam him. He lets go of Steiner, and he grabs Jarrett. He's not doing anything, mind you. He's just threatening. And by the way, he's not actually the smartest guy in the company because a lot of people have no respect for Kevin Nash because of how lazy he was. The actual smartest guy, and I don't know who it is, I'd have to pay very, very close attention, but it's whoever doesn't do anything but convinces you that they are. Hmm. I'm going to have to find that person. So Nash's gimmick is a guy who doesn't do anything but you can tell. Yeah, it's too patently obvious that he's lazy. (laughs) Booker T is number seven. Here for Shivani's like, Kevin Nash has wrestled a very smart match. I'll say. Goldberg is number eight. Now, among... So, yeah, this was not the worst episode we've seen because they still had a clue. Goldberg comes out. He grabs Russo, but then before he can do anything, Steiner and Jared attack, and he has to fight them up. So they are building to Goldberg doing something to Russo. The best thing about this is two weeks ago, he crushed Steiner's orbital socket. Oh, that's right. I remember that punch now. Okay. I so, remember that now. <laughs> so he uh, he gets back on offense. He hits the ropes. He throws a double clothesline. The side that Steiner was on, Goldberg hit him dead in the face <laughs> with his arm. You got to protect her on. Got to sink it in. So... Russo then grabs a bat and waffles Goldberg. Yes. And Goldberg has to sell it like he's been knocked out. Well, it was a bat. I was like, I can only imagine how much this fucking guy probably loved that. Yeah. Not Steiner hitting with a bat. No, no. Not some giant wrestler. This skinny geek in a hockey helmet, a, a comedy character. Yes. Hits him with a fucking bat. He's got to sell it like he's dead. So they handcuff Goldberg to the ropes. Everyone brawls up to the middle cage for this horrible brawl. Booker T is climbing up on top of the third cage. He's about to grab the belt, at which point Tony Schiavone says, the crowd is cheering. They think it's going to be over here. Right. Because nobody knows what's going on. The announcers are acknowledging nobody knows what's going on. They've seen time after time a ladder match where the the belt is hung from the rafters. You get the belt, you win. Sting somehow gets handcuffed to the cage. No one has any idea when or how that happened. The belt ends up at the bottom cage. Russo is celebrating when out runs the cat. He runs into the triple cage. He kicks Russo in the head and then holds up the belt and he celebrates. Nash power bombs him. He's got the belt. Everyone thinks he's going to win. Here, Goldberg busts out of the handcuffs, makes the big Superman come back, levels everyone. He poses with a belt like an arrogant jackass because everyone must be stupid. But then right as he's about to leave, Bret Hart slams the cage door in his face. Never saw that finish before in a cage match. Yeah. And Russo ends up with a belt, and Nash is threatening him, but it's a swerve. And all the heels hug each other, and they're very careful so Nash can leave first, and he's still the world champion, and they all leave. So here is my question. (laughs) Same question I had last week. What was their idea? What was the point of this? Not... What was Big Sexy and Vinny Roo and the Chosen One and Big Papa Pump? What was the point of all this? To fool people? Yes, that was the point. That was the point in storyline. They went to all of that trouble. They paid for the cage. <laughs> they flew the cage. They got in. these they geeks up the at 4 a.m., these losers. They got them up there to build this fucking cage. This cage. And after all that, it was just to say, we fooled you. 
I hate this show. I take it back. I'm mad now. What a bunch of shitheads. I mean, as characters, what a bunch... Like, not even good heat. No! Like, this is the dumbest flock of shitheads I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> All that trouble for this? Is that what you call All it? that trouble for that. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine going to th those lengths to just, I guess, fool the baby faces. When the show is over... You got beat up in this... Like, you got hit with people weapons, pounded on you. You fell on steel. You climbed all the way up a cage and down twice. Not only that, you risked the world title. You put the world title at risk. Mm -hmm. And you you put extra opponents in the match when the Chronic came in. Keep in mind, early in the show, when things went wrong and Russo, like, buried his head in his hands. Yeah. Realizing, you know what? I really am a dumb motherfucker. Because I came up with this stupid idea and I actually may lose the world title out of all of this. And when it's all said and done, and the best case scenario unfolded, and in the end everything went as well as it possibly could have, they are exactly where they were exactly. when the show yeah. started. They, they accomplished nothing. Their bump card has been clicked a few more times. Rob's fantasy Steiner got football hit in the belt face. is a bigger accomplishment than anything the heels did on the show. Oh, it's far more prestigious. Yes. What a dumb show. Yeah, they were running in place this week. Our show here made Rob's belt far more prestigious. We did. Than TNT and TBS and Vince Russo and World Championship Wrestling and everything they've done for that fucking world title. Can you imagine? It's sad is what it is. It actually is. Let's do this thing, Vinny. Hit my music. The finishes on this show were pin after nutshot. We didn't even mention that. The, the Filthy Animals finish is a hit to the balls right in front of the ref. That's what it was. It was a double leg drop to the genitals. Right in front of the ref. Which I did love because, like, Violent J, I, I not, can't get up from that. My balls. Yeah. They're huge. Pin in a handicap match after one guy missed his partner. Clean pin in a battle of brothers. Clean pin in a handicap match. Pin despite interference from a half dozen dudes. Clean pin in a half dozen dudes on one handicap match. And win via escape in a terribly convoluted triple cage match. Oh man, you were way too nice on that main event finish. I'll say. Well, here's your, here, the floor is yours, Brian. Well, I mean, we've talked about it all. There was so much more to it than that. I had nothing else to add. Dude that swerved. Ah, oh, fuck it, who cares? <laughs> I can't even wrap my head around how stupid it was. Well, that's it, everybody. I need like a thing on the wall, a countdown. I was uh, it, when I changed the date on that show to September. Started counting down the oh, like six months to go, man. November, yeah. December, we're January, almost February, there. Six months. Yeah, but Russo's not around the whole time, right? So it's only, it, we're almost done. Then it's like good for a while, then it dies. Actually, yes. I've been done with Russo. If I recall. For a while. All right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up for today. There's all sorts of stuff up on the front page. There's Observer Lives, Observer Radios. There's Q&As from Chicago. There's this, that, and the other thing. And that's it from here. We'll talk to you again after a while. Good night. Adios.